game dev game journey. journey. Okay, now we're gonna use our ready function. So we're gonna say function underscore, remember that means we're getting a list of all the built-in functions and ready is obviously a built-in function. So we're going to use the other built-in function, randomize, to generate a random seed for our random number, which we're going to, well, which we're going to use to randomly place the coins. So now we can find out how big the screen is by saying setting our screen size variable to get viewport and we want to get the visible um, get the visible rectangle and we want the size of that rectangle. Now that this code allows us to calculate the size of the screen and we're storing it in screen size. Now what we want to do is when the game starts the player should be hidden. So we're going to use a shortcut a way to refer to nodes that are over here and the, the built-in shortcut symbol is the dollar so when you go dollar you immediately start to see all the nodes that are available and the node we want is player sorry I don't know why I chose that one player okay so now we're referring to this player node and we want to call one of its methods and we want to call the hide method so we hide the player when the game starts. Now ready is the first method to run when a game launches. It'll run ready and then it'll start running either um, the process function or the physics process. So when the game launches, it's going to get generate a random seed for us. It's going to get the dimensions of the screen and then it's going to hide the player. Okay, and then I explained that dollar notation, right? The dollar notation um, refers to the nodes that are available to use. The reason we use randomize is because if you want your sequence of random numbers to be different every time you run the scene, then you need to use randomize. If you don't use randomize and you just generate random numbers, you'll generate the same random numbers every time. Okay, so randomize is used to, to generate a seed and it's usually the current time. So now we're gonna make our custom function, which is our new game function. So this is the function that runs when we want to start a new game. And what we're gonna say is playing is now set to true. This means we've started a new game, right? The level we might set to one. Uh, the score must be reset when you start a new game to zero. Uh, time left will now equal playtime, that variable we created. And now we want to set the player's start position. So we're going to refer to the player with our dollar shortcut. So dollar player dot. Now we're going into our player scene and we want to set the player's start. And we want to set it to the players to to dollar player start dot position okay so we're setting a player's start position at the new game then we want to show the player so we go dollar player dot show and then we want to start the game timer so we go dollar game timer dot start and we want to spawn coins so we're gonna we're gonna create a method to spawn coins it doesn't exist yet but we do want that method to run to start spawning coins so we're gonna say spawn coins and the coins to run so when you make a when we start a new game these are the things we want to happen right now this spawn coins method doesn't exist. It's telling us the method spawn coins isn't declared in this current class. So we will need a function that will create a number of coins based on the current level. So we need to make that function. So let's go ahead and say function spawn coins. 
and let's use a little loop here for i in range four to or four plus level okay so we're going to spawn at least four coins but it could be there'll be one extra coin per level okay and so now we need to create a coin now what we're going to do here is we're going to create we've got a scene right called coin now we want to create and, and that scene creates a single coin it's it represents a single coin now we want to make new instances of that scene and we saw how you can make instances here in the in the interface of Godot by clicking on the chain or by dragging our scene file but if we want to do it in code this is how we would do it so we can create a variable called C and we can make that equal to a coin dot instance okay that now creates a new coin and now we can add this new coin to our container of coins because we've got this thing called coin container over there which is just holding coins so we can say dollar coin container dot add child and we're adding our coin to this container of coins okay now we can set this the screen size of this coin so we can see c dot screen size equals our current screen size and we can set our position for the coin equal to back to two and we want a random position each coin must appear in a random position so we can use the built-in random range function and we can the position can be anything from zero to screen size x so it can appear so anywhere from zero to the the screen size uh, to the maximum x position of the screen size and of course we need a random y position as well so we're going to use rand range again and we're going to go the area anywhere from zero to the maximum y position screen size y for our for our position of the coin so this is placing the coin in a random position on the screen from the minimum value of of the x and y of the screen size to the maximum value of the x and y on the screen size so this can put a coin anywhere on the screen but it will be visible it could be on the edges but it'll be visible okay so essentially what our spawn what our spawn coins function does is it creates a number of instances of the coin object but in code this time rather than by clicking on that instance scene button and it adds it as a child of the coin container so whenever you instance a new node it's got to be added to the tree using that add child function over there and finally you pick a random location for the coin to appear in and you call this function at the start of every level in our new game function we call spawn coins and that'll spawn the coins on the screen so now eventually um, you'll want new game to be called when the player clicks the start button but for now just to test if everything is working we're going to call new game ourselves in our ready function okay so let's go to ready and let's just call new game over here new game and now we should be able to test this so let's run the scene and we've got a problem already okay so we now want to test our game our main scene so if we go ahead and, and run it we get an error at the moment here that there's an invalid call to function start in player.godot and here we're trying to call a function called start in player script but it's saying that it expected zero arguments 
and we are trying to send it one argument, the position of the player, but it's expecting zero arguments. So if we just go and look at the player here, you can see that the start function we created has zero arguments, but we're trying to send it the position of the player. We even inside the start function set the position of the player to pause, which is over here, which has no value. The value is coming from that main function. So we actually need to provide an argument over here, such as pause um, or position or whatever you want to call this, this value. Okay, so now if we go back to main and we try and run it again um, we get a new error okay now we get an error over here where it says here we're trying to set the screen size of the coin to the screen size that we've calculated in this program so we calculated the screen size over here by getting the viewport getting the visible rectangle getting the size of that and setting that size to the size of this whatever that's what the screen size is and now we're saying okay go into C well what is C C is a coin it's an instance of a coin go into the instance of the coin go to its screen size variable and set its screen size variable to this the size of the screen that we calculated but if we go to our coin you can see that it has no screen size variable so let's add that and as you can see here it's looking for a variable of type vector2 so let's say uh, let's create a variable here called screen size and we'll make it a vector2 and we'll just zero it out so it, it has no size at the moment save that let's go back to main and try and run it again by clicking rerun and now we're getting our coins there they are and we can run around and collect them because they get freed when we collect them so if we run the game again we get our coins in a different area so they are appearing randomly and we can collect them let's just run it one more time to see that we get coins in different places and there you can see coins appearing in different places and we can go and grab them so very important to understand the errors that we make and correct them so that our program works as intended right so now we can see that our new game uh, method starts a new game and our spawn coins function spawns random coins now what we should do is make sure that main is always the main scene that runs. So instead of clicking this play scene button, let's click on this play project button. And now it says, please confirm the main scene and no main scene has ever been defined. So let's select the current one as the main scene. And there now we know that that it's going to run our game every time.